quite a few of you didn't do the homework for some odd reason. That was a short one. All right. Um, problem number one, standard form. Standard form just puts it in descending order from least to greatest. So standard form for number one is just negative 10. Uh, is there any questions on the first 10 problems on standard form, leading coefficient, name by degree, name by number of terms? Standard form. Okay. Is there one that you want to see for standard form? So number one and number two and number three are all in standard form because there's no other order to put those. Does that make sense? Number four would be x squared minus x minus three. So you're just rearranging it. And then number five, negative 11x to the third plus 8x squared, standard form, rearranging it to the highest lowest. Number six is already in standard form. Number seven is already in standard form. Number eight, negative 2x to the third minus 4x squared plus, five, plus 11x, excuse me. You can combine 6x and 5x. Number nine is in standard form. Number 10, negative 5x squared. Uh, looks like minus 3x if you combine your x terms, plus 2. Anything else on up through 10? Yeah. It's a uh, trinomial. Because you would have three terms once you combine like terms. No, 3x minus 6x combined. Do what? Two different dimensions. Okay, we're going to talk about that more today. Uh, let's see. 11 through 18, anything more there that you want to see? That's all the rest. So combining like terms. Is that okay? Feel okay about that? If you would, make sure if it's done, put your name on it, pass it on forward. If you don't have it done and you have a bottom mark, don't pass it forward with nothing on it because I'm not going to give you any points. Do it. And now let's talk about this worksheet. Um, I am on the first side. The first side down at the very bottom, there's a box of stuff. So let's talk about each of those. All right, um, so on the first side of this, where you have, uh, looks like eight answers down at the very bottom, the first little thing says, I am a cubic trinomial with a leading coefficient of one. So cubic would mean its highest exponent is what? If it's cubic, highest exponent is three, right? It says, I'm a cubic trinomial with a leading coefficient of one. That means that the x to the third would have a number of 1 in front of it. Now, obviously, if you had just x to the third, that adds 1 in front of it. So, and trinomial means how many terms? 3. So which one works below to be there? Which one works below that? So the third, it's, it's like 1x to the third, but they just have it listed as x to the third. Yeah, x to the third plus 6x minus 2 would go in that first little thing. I cubic trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. Is that all right? Let's go to the box to the right. I am a quartic monomial with a lead coefficient of 2. So a quartic, no it's not, quartic is due, or quadratic, quadratic, yeah. You didn't get one of these? I'm sorry. So I am a quadratic monomial. A monomial would be one term, right? I am a quadratic. Quadratic would mean it's raised to the what power? Second. Quadratic means second power. Yeah, quartic would be four. So that would be down at the very bottom. Uh, and leading coefficient of two. So which one works? 2x to the second. Okay. Third box down says I am a quartic binomial with a leading coefficient of 1. I'm a quartic, so it's raised to what power? 
to the fourth power. Okay. I am a quartic binomial. So binomial means how many terms? Two. Two. With a lead coefficient of one. It could be, yeah. I was just thinking that. So I think the only one that would work there would be 3x squared minus x to the fourth. Because that's a binomial. You, you can't add or subtract if you have different exponents. And I'm going to explain why in a few minutes. Cool? Uh, let's see. The fourth one, so this is on the right side, second one down on the right side. I am a quadratic, means it's to the second power. Binomial means you have two terms with a leading coefficient of three. So something that has a lead coefficient of three. Binomial, two terms. Which one is it? 3x squared. squared plus 2x. Good. Uh, the fifth problem, so the third one down on the left, you can call me a constant monomial. So if it's constant, does it have a letter? No, that's a monomial. How many terms? One. Which one works? 18. 18. Cool. I am a quadratic trinomial. So quadratic means it's to the second power. Trinomial means you have how many terms? Three. And the lead coefficient on the squared term is one. X squared plus 3x minus 2. Cool. The seventh problem, which is the fourth one down on the left side, aka a linear binomial with a lead coefficient of 3. So it's linear. That means it has to be raised to the first power. So that would mean just that x standing there without an exponent showing. Which one works? 3x minus 2. 3x minus 2. And the last one says, I am a cortic. So it's raised to the fourth power, monomial, you have one term. 2x to the fourth. 2x to the fourth. Okay. We will do the back side of this next time. Cool? You can do the back side now. I see. <coughs> There's one more that's sneaking up on me. I'm trying at least. All right. So a few things to run through. This will be off your notes. Did I hand out notes yet? Nope. Oh, okay. Hand these out. It's pretty short, but we have some depth to talk about with these. And I hope it makes sense of why you can't add or subtract if you have it raised to a different uh, different power. That's the next one. So polynomial equations and factoring, adding and subtracting polynomials, learning target, target, I can add, subtract polynomials, leaving the answer in standard form. So let's define standard form. Standard form means we are in descending order with our exponents. You start with the highest exponent and you work to the left, going to the lowest exponent. Lowest exponent would be getting it to, to the zero power, which would be a constant, like the number five or the number 12 or the number negative two or something. Well, they don't always go to a constant because if, if, they're, if they don't have a constant label. But you're trying to go from highest exponent to the constant from left to right. Cool? All right, let's see what we got. We have that. All right. So problem number one, adding polynomials, add the like terms together so that have the same exponent. Okay? So first thing I want to look for is let's find our highest exponent in here. What's my highest exponent between the parentheses? X to the third. Okay. Do I have any other X to the thirds anywhere? No. So I'm going to write that down. Here it comes. Okay. Now we're going to look for X to the second. I have one here and I have one over here. And being that we're adding these, I'm going to, I can go 3X to the second plus 6X to the second, which you're counting them, which means you have 9X to the second. And then you have 8x and 8x. Again, we're counting them. So we have 16x. And then we have minus 15. 
Okay, so it's set up in descending order for you. Does that make sense? Okay, let's look at the next one. So we're adding this. So technically I could just drop the parentheses, no big deal. But we'll just keep them there. What's my highest exponent I have on this second problem? To the fourth. To the fourth. Okay, I have one here. Do I have another one? Nope. So I have 4x to the fourth. Okay, then we go to the third. So I have to the third right here. Do I have another third? No. Nope, so we're just going to write that down. Then I have to the second. So second and second. So again, we're counting them. So I have 9x to the second plus 12x to the second, which means I have how many to the second? 21x to the second. Good. All right. And I have negative 4x and negative 3x. Again, we're counting them. So how many do we have? Negative 7x. And then my constants, which is my number value. 6 minus 5 is? 1. That's all it is. You see how it's descending in order? 4, 3, 2 to the first. This is a constant of the x to the 0. Okay? How's that seem? All right? All right, now, I want to take a second and let's talk about why when you add or subtract these, does the exponent not change? Okay? So, when you, in terms that you might understand pretty easily, is if you have something raised to an exponent, you know, yes, graphically it means something, but something to say the third power is in the third dimension. Okay? Length, width, height. So if you had something to the second power, it would be in the second dimension, something to the first power, it would be in the first dimension as a constant in the zero dimension. Okay? If you had something in the tenth dimension, or raised to the tenth power, it's in the tenth dimension. Can I define what the tenth, all ten dimensions are? No. I can just mathematically say that's what we're doing. So if you were to add, so think of this. If I were to take a shoebox, okay, that's 3D, right? Length, width, height. And then I were to take a straight line. I could add that straight line to that shoebox all day long. Do I ever get another shoebox? No. They're two different dimensions. They're not going to add with each other or subtract from each other. So that's that's the, the in and out, kind of what you need to start thinking about. Okay. So when you have different exponents and you're adding or subtracting, you can only combine like terms together. The exponents don't increase or decrease. They stay as is. Now, it could become, they could cancel each other out, which is fine, but that's what we have so far. Hey, I found your, all right. Subtracting polynomials, combine like terms together that have the same exponent. Okay, you have to pay attention to the signs here. So, first thing I want to ask, is there something outside here that I should distribute here? No, so I'm just going to rewrite this not having the exponent. Is that okay so far? Now I have this negative here. This negative has to come here and here and here. So I get negative 2x to the third. What's the next one? Minus 3x. What's the last one? Minus 9. Now we're just going to start counting. Okay, I have negative 2x to the third, negative 2x to the third. How many negative 2x, how many? I have negative 4x to the thirds, right? And then I have x minus 3x, which gives me how many x? Negative 2x. And then I have the constant of 4 and negative 9, so I have negative 5. Is it in descending order? I'm missing x to the second, but that's okay. It's in descending order. It's getting less and less and less each time. There's that answer. Put that down a smidge. All right, this next one. Is there anything out front here for me to distribute over the parentheses? Right here? Anything? Nope. So let's just drop the parentheses. And then what do you think I have to do with this negative here? It comes here, it comes here, it comes here, and it comes here. Negative, negative 7x to the third is? Positive 7x to the third. Positive 7x to the third. Good. 
negative negative 2x squared is? Positive 2x squared. And then negative times positive 2x, negative 2x, and then negative times negative 5, positive 5. Are we okay so far? Any part of that that's goofy? All right, so highest exponent is to the third. If I combine those together, how many do I have? 5 plus 7 is? 12. 12x to the third, good. All right, second power, second power. What's going to happen there? Yeah, they're gone. I don't have to put anything. I don't have to put 0x squared. I can. It's not necessary to, but they cancel each other out, so I'll just strike through them. All right, and then I have negative 8x. Good. And then I have here and here, plus which plus 11. plus 11. I'm missing the x squared term. It's okay. I'm still in standard form. I'm in descending order all the way down. All right? Feeling okay? Going too fast or anything? All right. So terms to look for, you have positives and negatives. Factors look for multiplication. So like if we were going to distribute over. Are the following collections of terms, factors, or both? Oh, I just have it in standard form, right? And then this, wait, what am I doing? This this really can't go any further than what it is. So it's a term, right? Terms. All right. What about here? What what do you notice that's taken place twice? It's multiplication. So we have these as our factors, okay? Meaning, if I could re-multiply over, it would be for multiplication. So what did that say? Factors, look for multiplication. Is there multiplication that would take place here? Yes. So that we have factors, okay? Oh, I guess you could say that. So then if you were to simplify it, you could have some terms. I'll just put that in parentheses. I think that might be something. So we could call this a both. What about here? Yeah, I think if, if we were to multiply this all out, we would also have terms. So I think we could have both here. Okay? So this is just you're multiplying and multiplying. This is foil on foil, is basically what it is. What do you think? So we're we're going to be coming up on the factoring portion of algebra one. Now here's the tough thing. Some of you have seen factoring before. I will always show factoring as grouping, and the reason I will show it that way is I want to stay constant to what we do here in all of the rest of the math classes. So there's things called the diamond method, the box method, this method, that method. No, I'm showing factor by grouping, OK? It's what you will use as you progress more and more. It's not an impossible endeavor. Some people might say, oh, factor is the worst thing in the world. We have ways that we will teach it here that I think you will grab onto it very easily as long as you are participating. If you sit there with blank homework and don't ever do it, then yeah, it's going to suck. But it's, you'll move along with it. And so what factoring is going to be is, if this was all multiplied out, how would we get back to this? Okay, so it's undoing the factoring. Undoing that. Is that it? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. You kidding me? All right, well, let's take a look. So the assignment, let's see, make sure we have everything here. It looks like the first eight are adding or subtracting, doing the perimeter, doing the perimeter. 
Uh, rectangle, okay. That looks pretty quick. What do you think? I bet you, I bet you, if you were to do page 41 to get it done, and then that is page 41, so it's a factoring worksheet 7.1 number 2, I guess, how to classify it. So what I'd like you to do is that, as well as try the back side of the bubble sheet. Which means on the back side you're making up stuff. You're making up the, what they would. So you, everyone could have different answers on that, which is fine. Okay. Um, a little bit about next week, just so you all know. Um, we have Monday, so a week from today will be just a normal period, one through eight day, like normal, and then. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday all get goofy, where I only see you guys either Tuesday and Thursday or, yeah, it looks like Tuesday, Thursday, I would see you, or you, your other class. So periods one through four, you would have on Tuesday and Thursday next week. Periods five through eight, you'd have on, on uh, Wednesday and Friday next week. So it's a little goofy. They will be longer periods. I think they're about 70 minutes, 80 minutes. So they're a block thing. Um, fortunately, we here at Creek don't have block normally, so you know you would get a little taste of what block scheduling feels like, and then you know, I think you'd be like, "I'm pretty grateful that we don't have block scheduling." Have so yeah, yeah. Have, like, yeah. Uh, because we have the testing, and so they just, the the, the uh, park the state assessment stuff. Freshman, isn't it? Freshman and sophomore, something. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week. I'm sure they'll be stuff. They'll have huge pieces of paper on the wall, which has you separated into the last name of where to go. And I'm sure you'll hear more and more about it as we get closer to next week. Um, so here's here's the bright thing. So we have this week is a normal week. Next week, it, it's kind of a goofy week with the testing. Then we have the week after that. And then the week after that, spring break. Yeah. So we're trucking right along. Come back from spring break and it's April. We're done in May. Sheesh. I'll take it. Cool. Everyone know what to work on? So you have 25 minutes. This is not free time. This is work on the assignment. If you get it done, you don't have something to do.